Hi everyone, hope all of you are well. Many colleges and universities will be using online lectures and learning methods instead of in-person classes in this new fall term. Consuming educational material online has been commonplace on the internet for the past decade or so. So the learning aspect itself for students isn't going to feel like any major shift. But one area where many students might struggle, which we already saw signs of in this past winter term as the pandemic emerged and there were changes to school systems, is with respect to focusing, concentration, and motivation. For example, on college campuses, many students would do much of their studying at the library. Even though they had their dorm or their apartment as a potential spot for studying, they preferred to go to the library. Now, different students have different reasons for doing this. One reason could be looking for a quiet space which makes it easier to concentrate. After all, many college students live with roommates and though you're both students and want to be courteous with each other, it will most of the time not be as silent as the study spaces of a college library. In a similar vein relating to having roommates, your home could just simply be too distracting. There's too much to do or going on that would take away from your ability to focus on your studies and so you prefer to go to a library. Now there are other more specific logistical reasons that students make use of libraries of course, like access to a printer or photocopier, the ability to meet others to work on group projects, making use of reference book and materials only available at the library, but with classes largely moving online, your collaborative work and access to materials will likely also move online, and so you might not need to print anything for submission at least, although it is sometimes nice to have things in print to reduce screen time for your eyes. Anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent. The main use of the library that we're focused on today, that you will still need for the coming term, is as a location for effective studying. If you're no longer able to go to the library, and you're forced to study from home, what are some of the things that you can do that might help your ability to focus? What you want to do is essentially replicate the elements that make a library environment conducive to studying for you as closely as you can. First off, if possible given your living situation, study in a different area or room from where you usually do your non-productive or leisurely activities. The reason for this is that part of the appeal of going to the library is that you go into a very basic and non-cluttered sitting and working environment. You can just sort of leave your things the way they are at home and now you're in this new space that you don't need to clean up or organize and it doesn't have all the distractions of devices and equipment in your room let's say. So that means that wherever you're going to do your studying from home, it should have an empty desk with a chair close to an electrical outlet. And you can bring your snacks or water, the stuff that you would have usually brought to the library. But other than that, there should be nothing in your immediate environment that might take away your attention. A second factor is noise or sounds. Now, this is an interesting one because different students have different attitudes towards this. Some students, when they go to the library, they drown out the natural sounds of the library by putting on headphones. Others actually prefer to hear the natural sounds of the library, and that sound helps them study better than if it was dead silent. Now, since you aren't actually in a library, you can find the sounds online like on YouTube, in a study with me video or some library sound video, to replicate the natural sounds that you would hear. This may seem strange to create the sounds of an environment that you're not really in, but it can help you focus, especially if it's something that your mind relied on in the past in order to get through the distractions. A third factor that people enjoy about a library environment is the presence of other people. Now, if you have roommates, you can obviously sit down and study together like you were in a library, but with many people not at their actual campus, they may be alone at home. So then it depends on what you really want in terms of interaction with other people from your pseudo-library experience. Is it the physical aspect of just being around others while studying? In which case, you can try and arrange with your family or friends to study in the same room as them when they study or do something else of a quiet nature. But maybe for you, it wasn't really about having others near you physically. It was more about having someone to talk to from time to time during the studying. In which case you can arrange over video calls, like Zoom or Skype, to study at the same time during a call and then talk to each other as you would in the library, notwithstanding the fact that you're not actually next to each other. The last thing that you might want to do to replicate the library is a little bit of role play, which is to say consciously altering your own behavior as if you were actually in the library for the purposes of a better studying experience. So for example, when you're sitting and studying, you can go get up to use the bathroom or grab a coffee, but don't do things like start cooking or playing the piano in the middle, 
because these are things that you wouldn't be able to do if you were actually in the library, and presumably by having all of these options, it will take away from the benefits you were gaining of going to the library in the first place. To help your mind with focus, try and follow the same pattern of studying and break taking intervals that you would use when you were actually at the library. Also, if when you were at the library and people would call you or message you, you would tell them, sorry, can't talk now, I'm studying at the library, then even if it happens at home, treat it like it's the library and do the same thing. Similarly, if you made a conscious effort to not watch YouTube videos or check your social media at the library, then do the same here at home. If it helps, consider even dressing up as if you were actually heading outside to go to the library. Put on or take with you the accessories that you would normally have worn to the library. Again, this fiction may seem silly, changing clothes even though you're still going to be at home, but if you're making the same sort of investment in time and effort, that you were making when you actually went to the library, then you are more likely to take this study session seriously in the same way. And your, even your external look may help how you feel internally, in terms of getting you back into the same flow state as previously in the library. Basically, the idea is that when you step into this room or this other space that you've designated, for all intents and purposes, you are at the library. And so not only should your auditory and visual senses give you that feeling, but your own behavior needs to also be part of that feedback loop. Now just to reiterate, I'm not saying that this method of studying in a library or simulated library is the best method and that you need to follow these steps to achieve it. This advice is simply for those who did most of their studying in libraries in the past and have some difficulties achieving the same quality of studying in a home environment. This latter group of people benefited from the discipline of studying in a library for many years and thus will benefit from bridging the gap between the library and home for their studying time. I hope you found that helpful and let me know in the comments what has worked for you in transitioning to studying from home. Please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. Until next time.